Today, we members of Peace Action and our allies in Staten Island and Brooklyn are gathered to announce the endorsement of Steve Harrison, who's running for Congress in the 13th Congressional District. Uh, we're announcing the endorsement by National Peace Action. Uh, Kevin Martin, the Executive Director of Peace Action, and Paul Kuwika Martin, the Political Director, who live and work near Washington, D.C., were unable to t attend our press conference today, but send their support. Peace Action PAC is the Political Action Committee of Peace Action, the country's largest peace and justice organization with over 100,000 members, with state affiliates and local chapters in 29 states. Peace, the Peace Action PAC bases its endorsement on the voting records of congressional members and answers to candidates' questionnaires and public statements on war and peace issues. Most endorsees had 100% ratings, ha will have 100% ratings on the Peace Action Education Fund voting record. We sent a uh, candidate questionnaire to Steve Harrison, and when we asked him, do you support the new generation of nuclear weapons and programs called the Reliable Replacement Warhead and Complex 2030, he said no. Yes. We asked him, do you believe in the call for the elimination of nuclear arsenals? A call made in a January 2007 Wall Street Journal by, guess who? Henry Kissinger, George Shultz, Sam Nunn, and William Perry. He said, yes, he does. call for all U.S. combat and non-combat troops to be removed from Iraq in such a way that minimizes the potential violence and for the U.S. to commit to financing reconstruction and redevelopment, he said, yes. When we asked him, do you believe the U.S. should take the nuclear option off the table with Iran? He said, yes, and no brain. Will you, when we asked him, will you use your position in the House of Representatives to attempt to prevent a military attack or the use of force to achieve regime change in Iran? He said, yes. When we asked him, will you work against federal military spending and redirecting spending to meet the human needs of Americans, including education, housing, health care, and the environment, he said yes. So we want to welcome Steve Harrison here. We'd like him to say a few words, and a couple of the organizations who are part of Peace Action and our allies are going to speak for a very short time after he speaks. So come on up. Thank you, Sally. I, I greatly appreciate it, and I have to tell you that for reasons I'll tell you in a few minutes, uh, I consider it to be one of the great honors to receive uh, this endorsement. And I use the word endorsement because uh, to me an endorsement is something that is, uh, actually it's a two-way situation. Not only do you endorse me, but I fully endorse you. And I think that's a very important thing. And what I really like about uh, this particular endorsement is that it is uh, not a hollow, backslapping political endorsement. It's an endorsement that comes from people who believe in what they're saying, that are really fully committed to what they're talking about, know what they're talking about, and they come not just with a, hey, I'm behind you, they come with troops and treasure. And that's an extremely important thing to a campaign such as this. I know that you hit the streets, and I know that you all do. I look around here and I see the activists. You know, that word is not a hollow word, it's a very important word. It means that you're active, you do things the way they should be done. Let me just tell you very shortly, some of you may have heard me talk about this. I actually launched my campaign telling people about war. It's interesting. We're here talking about peace, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about war. The truth of the matter is that Steve Harrison would not be standing here in front of you today were it not for a war. And that war was World War II. 
Why this is important to me, it tells you a little bit about why peace, not just peace in Iraq, but peace in general, is such an important thing. Because peace affects everything. It affects everybody. And it affected me in a time when I didn't even know that it would affect me. And there was a, uh, a carrier that was in the Pacific during World War II. And a young fellow was uh, flying uh, a plane, coming back from a mission. And while he was landing on that carrier, he crashed and he died. Uh, that fellow was my mother's fiancé at, at the time. And obviously, if uh, he had survived that, uh, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. <laughs> Uh, but she did meet my father uh, about four years later, and uh, she very much loved my father. But I can tell you right now that uh, as we grew up, and she would tell us about this fellow, his name was Tom, uh, she would always get that spacey look in her eyes, you know, <laughs> that one that was distant about what would have been and what could have been and how things might have been different. And the reason I tell you that is because it's something that I recognized affected my mother. She's now 85 years of age. It was only uh, a few weeks ago that we actually had a conversation about this because I go, she lives here right in Staten Island, and uh, she had that conversation, and uh, she always talks about it. And now, she never hesitated, even with my father. He was a great guy, but he would listen very, very carefully to it. But it shows you how war actually not only affects exactly what happens in a moment, but it actually goes on for generations past, and how it has such an incredible effect on everybody, and why war in and of itself is a bad thing. We have a candidate for, con for, for the presidency, someone actually that I support, okay, but a few months ago what he said was something about, uh, I think the way he phrased it was that I don't oppose all wars, he said I only oppose dumb wars. And I, there's something to that, no. but as I stand here right now, I tell you, I oppose all wars. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I recognize that we as a nation have a right to secure ourselves, and I recognize there may be wars, such as World War II, where we really do have to do something. But the point is, and I heard Sally talk about this actually about recently, and she's so right, it doesn't just have to be a last resort, it has to be an absolutely unequivocally end of the line with no option whatsoever resort, and that is not what I've seen from our government right now. What I've seen from our government is exactly the opposite. They don't take war as a last resort, they take it as a first resort, all right? They use the power of this nation to get out there and tell people that we're going to hold this over you, and this does not endear us to other peoples. What we have to do is something completely different, and that's what peace action is about, and that's why I'm here today.